Hi everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. I want to do a bit of a deep dive in this video on a relatively advanced formula called Earlier. Now, I would be pretty confident that most, most of you who are sort of at the beginner to intermediate really struggle to understand what Earlier actually does, the function Earlier actually does. So I'll just, I'll show you what, how, how I've used it in this particular example here. So this, this formula called Earlier. Now, and the reason I know that is because honestly, from my point of view, uh, I, I took a long time to really understand how this is used and when you would use it and why you'd use it, etc. Now, it was actually far more relevant uh, up until about 12 to 18 months ago from the, from the recording of this video, before variables were introduced. It actually was an effective way to get or to re, re, uh, calculate some sort of calculations but these days honestly you don't actually have to use that much and I'm I'm going to show you how early, what earlier does and, and how it actually works but then I'm actually also going to show you a better way and a more um, intuitive way to go and run calculations like this okay so let's let's dive into it now I'm in a table here now I'm in in this particular case I'm in a, my products table now my products table just to have a quick look at the model my products table is a lookup table in my model okay so that's all you got to know lookup table and so what I'm doing is I want to actually run some calculations in this table around in this case cumulative totals now you might think that well, why would you do that you can just do it in DAX and I agree in most cases you can do it in DAX and so I don't don't even really in a lot of cases recommend doing this but I think just understanding earlier is an, is, a, is, a, is important if you want to take your, your you know your, your DAX up to a new level because if you can understand earlier the key is that you really understand row context and just general context um, of calculations and that is a truly key concept when doing anything in Power BI so just becoming familiar with this this formula and understanding it and learning how to use it is is a really smart strategy okay so what I did was I want to I wanted to calculate a few cumulative totals within my table now now the first cumulative total was very generic I wanted to calculate it just based off a general index that I had so what I did is I, I have this index this one two three four five just for my products and you'll see that it is basically just derived from the demo product name that I have in this particular um, particular table then what I did was I worked out, well, what were my sales per product? And this is all I had to do for that. So total product sales was, um, I placed in total sales like this. And what is really key with this particular formula is this concept of context transition. It's a good, good thing to review, actually. If I just go sum of, say, revenue here, Actually, I don't have it, so we won't. We won't. Remember. But the key, the key, the key, the key here, the key here is that by placing a measure inside of here, context transition occurs, and you are able to move from a row context. So, so in a in a table, we are always initially at a row context to a filter context, and that's how this particular result is filtered for product one this is filtered for product two this is filtered for product three because we have it inside of a measure now the reason i dived into that is because understanding context and in particular what row context is in a table in a calculated column is key here okay so you've probably heard of row context and filter context now all they really really mean or what row context means is that it, an evaluation is going to happen at every single row okay and that is what occurs in a table right in a calculated column because every single row in a calculated column has a result so the evaluation is happening at every single row now what I wanted to do was I wanted to calculate a cumulative total based on this particular row and I wanted to calculate it in a calculated column Okay, so I wanted to count up at this row, this particular row here, I wanted to count up these two, then at this 1,000,077, I wanted to calculate up these three rows here, and so on and so forth. Now what we need to do inside this formula, and this is where earlier comes into play, is we are currently, just before any evaluation happens here, at a row context, right? But what filter does 
in this particular formula is it has an additional row context. So we started a row context to to uh, for this calculation, but then filter wants to go and then evaluate through again every single row in the product table, and then at every single row in the product table, look at what the index is and evaluate well, is it less than or equal to a specific number, and that specific number is say the row that we are on, right? So let's let's take an example. So for this particular row, right, we want to this this very specific result, this 3,092,000. What we want to do is we want to calculate up everything that is 8 or below, right? So 8 and below. So in, 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 in terms of the index. And so what, what we need to do is we need to, for this particular row, go and evaluate through every single row in the products table and work out, well, is there an index number less than or is the index number less than or equal to 8? And if it is, then we want to calculate up all the sales for those particular for, the, for those particular products. And as we go down and down and down, it reevaluates. It says, okay, well, this one it says, well, if it's 10, if the index is 10 and below, I want to aggregate them all up into this particular result. Now, what earlier enables us to do is jump from one row context to the initial to the earlier row context to achieve uh, or to retrieve a value. Now this particular value here that we want uh, that we want this to be is 10. Say for this particular result here is 10, right? We want to evaluate at every single row if the product index is less than or equal to 10 for this particular row here. And then if it is, we're going to count up all of these. And then the same here for 11, 12, 13. Now, some of you who are familiar with it, the cumulative total concept might think, well, why can't you put a max in here? We'll check it because that's what we do in the, the, the generic cumulative total pattern. Now, if I put a max in there, check out what happens here. It always evaluates to the max product index. It doesn't actually evaluate to the, um, the product index at the particular row. So what we need to do is we actually need to get out of this row context, this evaluating, and we need to jump back to the very initial row context to retrieve the product index. Okay. And that's what earlier does. It, it allows us to jump from one uh, context, in this particular case row context, to a prior row context to go and grab the result that we want. Okay, so a little bit to that. Let's have a look at another example. Um, how you can integrate this slightly differently. Now, what I've done here is I've ranked my product sales based on uh, my my products based on sales, right? And I've got a rank based on um, where they all sit. Okay, and so you see here that the uh, the top um, the top ranked sales uh, for this particular uh, for for our products is eight hundred sixty four thousand, and you see here that's product sixty three. And so then I, what I wanted to do was I wanted to create a cumulative total based on the ranking, okay? So check out the different parameters I have down here. Instead of uh, looking at the earlier index, I'm actually looking for the earlier product sales ranking, right? So what we're doing is we're uh, at every single row in this table, we're then going and evaluating through every single product uh, in this particular table, and we're trying to evaluate, well, well is there a, is the product ranking less than or equal to the product ranking on that particular row? And earlier is jumping out of this row context and jumping back to the initial row context created by being in a calculated column. Okay, now, how can we do this better? So you might think, okay, that's just a little bit too complicated. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Now, there is just a better way to do this now. And this is where 12 to 18 months ago, I think variables came into play and they are just far superior, far superior way to do it. And I'll show you, show you in a second why this is easy. And you can just bypass earlier, okay? So what we can do to, uh, and I'll just do it in this example here, we can go, um, we can call this one product, product index. Now, instead of jumping out of the row context created by filter, what we can do is we can actually go and just retrieve this value in its initial row context in a variable. So what I can do is I can go product index like this, right? And I can go um, and just add it like that because this is being retrieved from 
sorry, this is being retrieved from just the initial row context we're already at. Then down here in this part of the formula, I'm just going to go return and I can take this out and add in product index. Oh no, no, no sorry, I need the uh, variable actually, apologies, working a bit too fast. So then we go and find the variable product index, right? And I push enter. And so you will see here that this cumulative product sales now works perfectly in this new format as well, just like it just like it did before. And we can do exactly the same thing here, which I will I will do, I want to do. Um, so we'll go we'll go var um, product sales ranking. So instead of putting it inside the earlier, I'm gonna just going to find my product sales uh, ranking column in its initial row context. Then just go return and I'll bring this down into, into here. To me, this is a far, far superior way. And to be honest, if, with all the development work that I've done, I've, I've really ever used earlier. But as I said right at the start, it is a cool function to know and understand, okay? Now, um, because it's just understanding context is really, really key. Now, so if I just now uh, sort these from ascending. So you'll see here, if I drill in, you'll see here that now that this is the highest ranked, I think it should be product 63, it is, and we've got a cumulative total from there. So hopefully you can see that this is actually a way better way to work out these calculations than using earlier in, in my in my personal view. Some some don't believe that, but I, I do. I believe that variables are just key all around in, in um, index when you write decks uh, in, in many different areas of power bi and and this is just a big example where i think things become a, a lot simpler instead of having to jump in and out of um, context within formulas you can actually uh, initiate the calculations within variables or isolate the calculations within variables and it, it's just in my view much more seamless execution of a of a formula and much easier to audit etc okay I think that's enough. Gone on way uh, longer than I wanted around this unique function, but a good thing to review. A really good one to review, as I say, um, and one to just um, add into the you know in, into your mind mind bank around you know how DAX formulas work and how context uh, interact with each other. Okay, all the very best.